Hello, I am a consultant at the OU Writing Center, and today we're going to talk a little bit about how to create an outline. We'll also talk a little bit about why we outline, some steps for outlining, I'll show some templates and an example, and then we'll wrap it up with some quick tips at the end. So, why do we outline? Outlining can have three main purposes. Number one, it can help with writer's block. So having a set plan for how you want to develop your essay can be very helpful in getting you started in the writing process. Even if you get stuck halfway through your paper, you'll have a document that you can go back to and remind yourself of how to continue. Number two, it can help organize your writing. You will have a physical space where you can gather your ideas, sources, and material to think about how you would like to group them. And then later, you could reorganize them if you think you would like to follow a different flow or narrative style. Finally, outlining can serve as a visual aid to find the gaps of your information. You could see where you need to add more or take less as you see fit throughout the writing process. Some steps to consider when forming an outline are, one, define the purpose of your paper. There are four main types of essays, narrative, expository, persuasive, and descriptive, and each of these have a distinct purpose and a distinct objective. So understand which essay type you're writing and then define the purpose you should follow for it. Number two, research your topic. So before you begin the outline, it is important to have done a preliminary search of your topic and gather some key points that you would like to use for support. These will help in writing a thesis statement so you can then continue to step three, which is identifying your key points. So these are ideas you would have found through that research that will eventually become your paragraphs to support your main thesis. You should aim for at least three main points, but these will vary depending on your topic. And then four and final, incorporate those supporting details. So these details or subtopics are often facts, examples, data, articles. These will work as pieces of evidence to support your overall main claim. These points strengthen and validate each main point, so it is good to have at least two supporting details for each main point. This is a template for what an outline will look like for an expository paper. Another way to think about it would be to separate the essay in sections depending on their subtopics rather than each paragraph having a different topic. If you need to cover an area in more depth than another, this could be a good alternative. And then this is a template for what an argumentative paper would look like. It looks a little bit different um, in that it has claims instead of subtopics for the paragraphs. And then at the end, before your conclusion, you have a final section talking about the opposing views of that argument. Another way to think about it would be to add the opposing views, the opposing views after each of your claims. So if you have many opposing views and you could have one for each of your claims, this could be another way to think about that. So let's look at an example of an outline. For this example, we are going to be writing about an essay about how dog adoption rates rose during the pandemic, but dropped back down to normal rates once COVID, COVID vaccines became available. The purpose for this essay is to explain this phenomenon and the cause and effect of why it happened. So starting out with a super simple list of what ideas or support is needed to explain this event, we have pre-COVID adoption rates, the effects of social distancing on adoption rates, the effects of vaccine availability on adoption rates, and then dog adoption rates and ownership in the endemic phase. So after we have these, then we can add the supporting details in more depth. So think through what information you might need to expand on these ideas and make your reader have like a clearer view of the topic. And then finally, you can plug in your sources and your evidence. So this is when you add quotes, data, articles you have found that will support these topics. And overall, your outline should look a little bit something like this. Some quick tips to consider are to, before you outline, um, do some research and write that thesis statement. These can change at any time if you'd like, but it's preferable that you have these before you begin outlining. 
Use your prompt as a guide, so highlight the verbs that your professor uses and keep them in mind as you try to define the purpose of your essay. Look up examples and templates for your advantage. So these are very easy to find online. Just do a quick search and then use these as like an idea to start out. And then finally, when you're adding your sources at the end of your outline process, I always suggest to add them to your outline with the citation included already so that you don't have to go back to the article and try to find the author and the year date and then, you know, stop that writing process. It saves some time to do this by hand. I hope this was helpful. Here's our information in case you'd like to schedule an appointment or contact us with some questions. Thank you for listening.